This is Solving Systems of Equations by Substitution, Part 2. Alright, so here's another one like this. We only have one variable that has no coefficient. That's that y right there. That's the only good choice for rewriting. So when I solve that for y, pretty easy, all I have to do is subtract 2x from both sides. So I have negative 2x minus 5 equals y. So that y value needs to go into the first equation for y. So here's my substitution. Instead of y, I have negative 2x minus 5. Distribute, combine your like terms, and then solve. Subtract 15 from both sides gives us negative 3. Divide both sides by 10, and we have negative 3 tenths. It's entirely possible that you get a fraction answer, and you'll just have to be able to deal with that. Now, that's our x value. To find our y value, we're going to plug this negative 3 tenths in for x. If you have a calculator that will do fractions for you, all you need to do is type in negative 2 times negative 3 tenths minus 5 and let the calculator do the work. But if you don't have a calculator that will do that for you, you need to think about the 2 being 2 over 1, and then I could reduce the 2 into 10 and get 5. That's how I'm getting positive 3 fifths. I'm thinking of 5 as 5 over 1. Common denominator is fifths. Multiply the top and bottom by 5. That's where the 25 fifths comes from. Subtract this out and we get negative 22 fifths. So our ordered pair, our point of intersection is negative 3 tenths, comma negative 22 fifths. If we graph this, we'd have a heck of a time finding this point of intersection. That's why the graphing method is not the best method for finding the point of intersection. Now, I understand you may not want to check this, but I'm going to show you the check anyway. Since this is the equation I rewrote, this is the equation I want to plug back in. I'm going to put negative 3 tenths in for x, negative 22 fifths in for y. So there's the work right there. If your calculator will do this for you, this is great. You just type this in and it better equal 12. If your calculator won't do it, then you have to think about reducing. 2 goes into 4 twice, 2 goes into 10 5 times. That's how I get negative 6 fifths. A negative 3 times a negative 22 fifths. There is no reducing, I just get 66 fifths. These are different signs. Keep the sign of the larger and subtract. It gives us 60 fifths, which equals 12. So hopefully you have a calculator that will do all those fractions for you and you won't have to mess with all this common denominator stuff. In this example, the only variable that does not have a coefficient is this one right here, which means x is the only good choice for rewriting to get a variable alone. So take this equation over to the side here and do the work to get x alone. Subtract 2y from both sides gives me this. Now that I have this value for x, I'm going to plug that in for x in the other equation, which will give us this line. I'm putting 4 minus 2y in place of that x. This is 3 times the parentheses, so we know to use distributive property. And then the next step is to combine like terms. When we combine like terms, something strange happens, and that is that these variables canceled out. We have no variable, which makes you think you did something wrong, but you did not. This is a special situation. If the variable has canceled out, then there remains a false statement. Well, 12 doesn't equal negative 2, so that's a false statement. That means there is no solution to this system of equations. The terminology we use is that the system is inconsistent, and it also means if we had taken the time to graph these, you would have seen that the lines were parallel. Let's take a look at the next one. This also has a situation where x right here is the only good choice for the rewrite because all of these other have coefficients. Sometimes I could rewrite for a different one that has a coefficient and luck out and not get a fraction. But the easier thing to do is to look for the value that has no coefficient because that's the easy rewrite. So get this one solved for x x equals 8 minus 4y. We're going to plug that value back in for x, which gives us this. Distribute, and notice like terms, but when I combine those like terms, the variable has canceled out again. But it's a different situation. This time the variable has canceled out and there remains a true statement. That means the solution is infinite points. There are an infinite number of points that would work in these equations. But we can't just say infinite points. What you want to say is that it's the points that satisfy this equation. Now you're wondering where did this equation come from? Well, go back a second. Think about what we did in the graphing video. If it's the infinite point situation, it really means that these two lines are the same line. If these are the same line, 
then I could rewrite either equation and get the same conclusion. So I just took the top equation and rewrote it for y. Subtract x from both sides, divide both sides by 4, and that's where I get the negative 1 fourth x plus 2. We call this a dependent system because it's the same line. Now the way we'll write this answer is in x comma y format. So we write x comma that equation that we got right there by solving. The only time that happens is if these two equations happen to be the same line. Notice, if you multiplied this top equation by 3, you'd have that equation right there. That's how you know you have the same line. Let's look at another one like that because that's kind of tricky with that infinite points thing. So we need to rewrite one of these equations for x or y. I could rewrite for x or I could rewrite for y. I'm just going to choose to do y this time. So solve this equation for y by subtracting x from both sides. That's my statement for y. I'm going to plug that in for that y right there. And that gives me this equation, 2x plus 2 times negative x plus 2. Distribute. There's some like terms, but those like terms cancel out, and we get 4 equals 4. So we have a variable that canceled out. We are left with a true statement because 4 does equal 4. So we know it's that infinite point situation. We need to find them. We know our points need to be in the form x comma y. So we just have to have some expression for y. Well, we have it right there. So we're going to write x comma negative x plus 2. So that's our infinite points, meaning any point that fits this criteria will be a solution for this system. So pretend x is 5. Put, neg put 5 in here for x would be negative 5 plus 2 gives me negative 3. If I put 5 in for x and negative 3 in for y in both equations, I will get a true statement. 5 plus negative 3 is 2, yes. Put 5 here, 2 times 5 is 10. Put negative 3 in here, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 10 minus 6 is 4. Uh, let's pretend x was 1. So negative 1 plus 2 is 1. If we put 1, 1 in for both of these x's and y's here, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. So that's what we mean by infinite points. They must fit this criteria, though. You can't just randomly say, ah, oh, let's say x is 7 and y is 55. That's not what we mean by infinite points. It has to be the points that fit this criteria, x comma negative x plus 2. Conclusion on this is if the variable cancels out and you have a false statement, then there is no solution and it's an inconsistent system. If the variable cancels out and you have a true statement, the solution is infinite points, and you must write your answer as an ordered pair, x comma then, that equation that you have to solve for y, and this is a dependent system.